a round of introductions. And so I'll start and then I'll pop it over to one of my colleagues. For those of you who don't know me, I do see a lot of familiar faces on the screen, but I am Cheryl Lang and I am the ESEA Federal Programs Director here at the Maine Department of Education. We may have conversed via email, but this might be an opportunity where you actually get to put a face with a name. So I will pop it over to Monique Sullivan. Monique? Sorry about that. Good morning, everyone. Um, we're welcome to you're here to help our to see about tier three, uh, our schools and um, our principal and coaches meeting. And we are looking forward to um, answering any of your questions or um, and then just providing some support for you and um, turning it over to Renee. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Um, I see a lot of familiar faces. Uh, I've been working with a lot of you over the last year, supporting you <clears throat> throughout your uh, continuous school improvement journeys. And I look forward to sharing some information with you today and answering any questions you may have. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So <clears throat> as Cheryl stated this is an informational meeting as long uh, as well as a time for you to ask any questions or thoughts that you may have that you can share with us <clears throat> during our presentation we're going to be discussing and sharing information about the cna analysis uh, also going into resource equity we'll also be sharing some information about root cause analysis uh, giving you some information and sharing some links with you for professional learning opportunities. And then, as we said, we'll be ending our time today with questions and an opportunity for you to share any thoughts you may have. Okay, so the first piece of working on Tier 3, the strategic plan, is to look at your CNA um, and to do an analysis of it. And you want to update your data. You want to determine the degree of achievement of previous goals, uh, if you had any. Um, I know for some of you, you may be tier three. Um, you were um, identified or re-identified, and some of this may be a new process for you. So this is uh, kind of the, the format you want to go, the cycle you want to do. You want to look at your data and update it, determine the degree of achievement of previous goals, identify any trends and strengths and growth areas. We do get questions about like how many years of data and so not only does the data need to be current, but is it the, at least the last three years of data, which would be 20, you know, 2021, 21, 22, and 22, 23. And that is so that you can look at any kind of trends. Are there strengths, growth areas? Um, we get questions like, do, can I have more than that? Of course, you can have more than three years of data. It's whatever you need to get that trend to see um, if there's any trends in that data. And uh, we'll talk about that in a second, but we also get questions about, well, what does the CNA need to look up, look like? And I know Cheryl mentioned that we do have a template on our website, but this is really a document for you um, and your school and your leadership team. So if the form we have doesn't really work for you, uh, then create a, create a form or template that works best for you, as long as you have those components that can tell you where your, um, you know, where your needs are and your areas of strength and your uh, growth areas. So then you'll continue on and you'll conduct a resource equity review. And Renee's going to talk about that on the next slide about what that might look like for your school. And then you want to revise after you've um, looked, you know, updated your data, you've looked at your previous goals, um, you've identified any trends with the data, you've done your resource, um, conducted your resource equity review. Then you want to look and do, decide, do we need to revise our goals? Do we need to continue with the goals we already have? Um, do we need to create new goals based on this new data that we have, or we're seeing different trends that are coming out? Um, and then you wanna repeat that at least annually. The annual review is required, um, but you may need to do it more often um, as your data. You know, If you're reviewing your data, your progress monitoring, you may need to update or review your CNA more often. And I apologize, the CNA, I forgot to actually say what the CNA is, and that is the Comprehensive Needs Assessment, um, and, but we abbreviate as CNA. Um, and then, you know, some questions you might want to ask are, were previous goals accomplished? Um, did To what degree were the goals accomplished? Maybe we only met, and you know, we wanted 50%, but we only made 25%. 
Um, did new trends emerge um, from the updated data? Maybe you thought it was you were focusing on, um, you know, literacy or um, you know, letter identification or something simple like that, and you realize, wow, that works. That the work we've been doing is works. So now we want to focus on something else. Do goals need to be revised or updated? Do 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 uh, new goals need to be created to align with the updated data and the trend analysis? And are resources equitably distributed? Um, within your school? Um, and is the CNA being used as a living document? I know we've heard back from districts that they do the CNA for the ESCA or for the compliance piece, but then it goes and sits, maybe not literally on a shelf, but somewhere in a file that you never pull back out. And we really want this to be a living, breathing document that you're using to, um, to drive instruction and school improvement in your school, continuous school improvement. And then has the um, has the updated plan been communicated to all your stakeholders? Um, do Does everyone, even on your leadership team, know what the CNA is? And is the plan reviewed at least annually or more often as needed? So these are just questions that you want to start the whole process off um, when you're creating your strategic plan um, for this continuous school improvement. Um, and I think, I think that's a lot. I know you guys have a lot on your plates. It's the beginning of the school year. Um, but this is a great time to look and review your current data. And as Monique shared, <clears throat> doing a review of resource equity is a significant part of doing that CNA analysis. And it's also a significant part of your strategic plan as part of uh, being a tier three school and completing the tier three uh, continuous school improvement grant application. <clears throat> when you're completing that strategic plan and grants for me, <clears throat> it specifically asks you to identify where there are resource inequities that have been determined based on that CNA analysis. And then you're asked as part of that strategic plan to address how you're going to uh, improve on that resource inequity and, and actually uh, I identify where those resource inequities are and how you're going to uh, make them um, equitable. So one of the things that I wanted to talk about, because as we're reviewing those applications that have come through between last year, um, which is why I, I felt this was an important piece to go over. And then as I've seen some applications come through for FY24, this is definitely an area that I think uh, we can really uh, approve upon because when you're I, truly identifying uh, resource inequities, um, you're really able to meet the needs of students and address where there can be some changes made within your school and district. So when we're thinking about resource equity and doing an, an analysis of that uh, resource equity, there are 10 dimensions <clears throat> that we really need to be looking at. And as I said, as I've reviewed and Monique has reviewed and Cheryl um, as we've reviewed applications and we see what some of these identified resource inequities have been, um, sometimes they're not always things that schools are able to address and are um, truly able to uh, improve upon. Whereas these 10 dimensions that um, are shown on, this, on the slide right now, those are where you actually can Im improve upon and make more equitable. Uh, for instance, the 10 dimensions include things such as instructional time. Um, and that's where, you know, perhaps you have a different uh, grade levels receiving a different um, time amount for math instruction. Maybe your third graders are getting 45 minutes of math and your fifth graders are getting 60 minutes of math. You know, that isn't and um, it's not equitable. So how could you possibly in the within the framework of your school and the framework of your schedule, how could you possibly make that more equitable? Um, another thing that they look at is rigorous content. They also ask you to discuss and look at teacher quality, school leadership quality, school funding, and how that school funding is equitable within uh, the district, uh, and also diverse and inclusive schools. And like I said, that's just to name a few. And there is a resource that is linked on this page and you'll be able to access it when you get the PowerPoint sent to you along with the recording 
of a deeper dive into each of those dimensions with probing questions that you can ask yourself at the school leadership team meetings to do that an analysis of uh, the resource equity and do that review. Um, some of the starting point discussion questions that you can answer as a school leadership team is, how do these dimensions of resource equity compare to our own experiences and our own beliefs about what it takes to achieve equity of outcomes? How are the dimensions interrelated? How do they connect to each other? Uh, what is our hypothesis for the source of the greatest resource inequity? And then what next steps would advance the discussion of resource equity within your school and within your district? And as we said, this is really an important aspect of the overall CNA analysis. And it really is a crucial piece that needs to be highlighted within your strategic plans. So when you're creating those SMART goals that connect to uh, your root cause analysis, which we're actually going to discuss in a couple more slides, when you address those root causes, you also need to address how those resource inequities, based on these 10 dimensions, how they're going to be addressed as well. So again, um, just a little bit more information and you can use that resource to help you guide these discussions. Yes, and I may have forgotten to say at the very beginning of this presentation that on each one of the slides where you see the little eye down at the bottom that Renee was mentioning, each one will have one or more resources directly linked to it. So you'll see that throughout the presentation. Hmm. So we know that there's a lot on your plates right now. We just want to kind of get a general idea of where you are in your CNA analysis. So we have just a quick poll where you can, um, where are you in your CNA analysis? Are you identifying your strengths? Are you working on your growth areas? Are you looking at your resource inequities? Or are you doing a variation of all three? So let me just throw that poll up there. We're just getting a just a quick idea of where you guys are. Okay, it looks like everyone I think has filled it out. So I'll go ahead and end the poll. I'll share the results. So it looks like pretty much the majority of, of, you, of the schools are doing a variation of all three. It looks like there is a focus on identifying the growth areas, um, but it looks again like the largest percentages you're doing all three, which is great to hear that um, that it is kind of hard to separate them and you're working on it on, on them all at the same time. So thank you for that. We just wanted to get a general idea of where you guys are in the CNA analysis. So thank you. So as I mentioned in my previous slide, <clears throat> when you're doing your strategic plan and as we, as Monique talked about and doing that CNA analysis, you're identifying your strengths, you're identifying growth areas, you're identifying those resource inequities. <clears throat> it's then important to do a root cause analysis. And you might be asking yourself, well, why, why a root cause analysis? Why are we doing a root cause analysis? Which, <clears throat> excuse me, can be seen as taking some time to accomplish this. And the reason why is because a root cause analysis really prompts a school leadership team to use a series of cause and effect questioning that can help you peel back the layers of an, an identified need. It also helps the leadership team to see all the causes of, of an identified need. You know, you might have something identified as a growth area and there might be a, a, wide, a variety of things that are really causing that. And some may seem um, something out of your control. 
and some might be something that you can control. So it really identifies all those uh, causes. <clears throat> then finally, um, or next, it actually helps you focus on the underlying root cause that gets right down to the deep dive that's causing that identified need. It also helps the leadership team to identify a manageable cause to work on. As I said, sometimes when you think about things such as um, chronic absenteeism, well, you know, that's something that's really hard to manage and to work on. But when you're doing a root cause analysis and peeling back those layers and identifying all the causes of chronic absenteeism, you can focus on a root cause that you do have control over. And finally, it helps the school leadership team determine a goal addressing the root cause and the best course of action to increase the probability of achieving this goal. Um, again, it just, it really puts it in perspective and, and gives actionable steps that truly will uh, increase that probability of achieving it. And it, seem, it, it as I said, seems more manageable. Something like that big chronic absenteeism actually seems like something you can tackle and improve within your school. So because of that um, actual uh, identified need being a big one of chronic absenteeism, I actually shared a, uh, a survey. It's, it's, it's a, a survey that you can do with students who have uh, been chronically absent, and it can be done within the school, as at the school level, at the family level, and it's something that uh, the CC Network puts out as a resource for helping determine root causes to chronic absenteeism. So I thought that was a, a useful uh, piece of information to share with you, a useful tool to add to your toolkit. So I, I did give access to that. And then I also gave a, a template that you can make a copy of. It's a, an editable template of a root cause analysis that you can actually type into with your leadership team. And you'll actually see um, a kind of a, a copy of that template later on in, in the presentation. But I did want you to have access to being able to capture that uh, to add to your toolkit as well. So the next slide is actually going to be a video that we show you. It's a real little quick video about the five whys for the Jefferson Memorial, which goes through the root cause analysis model. And so it kind of gives you a kind of an example of how you could do a root cause analysis in your own on your own leadership team um, after you've reviewed your strengths and your growth areas. And I forgot to mention, there is no sound, sorry.
So as I said, we have shared with you a template for doing a root cause analysis. It's just a very basic template, uh, but we decided, you know, and figured we didn't want to have to have you guys reinvent the wheel. So I did share a QR code for you to have an editable, uh, editable um template for you to use. But basically, um, in order to do a root cause analysis, it's really all about identifying that perceived problem. What is that perceived problem and need that you're um, wanting to address? And it's about doing that series of questions. In the strategic plan of the grants for me, we've asked for at least three layers of those questions. The, the why is that? Uh, but you can do up to five which is as the five whys indicates. Uh, but as I said, you identify the perceived problem and you say, well, why is that? You find the next possible cause and do the next, well, why is that? And you, you keep doing that questioning, finding the cause and effect, cause and effect <clears throat> to the point where you get down to the root cause, the underlying reason as, as to why this identified need is happening. From there, you can then focus on how can you create a SMART goal? And um, that SMART goal would then address that specific deep root cause that is the true underlying root cause of that perceived problem. And as I said, then you can create that SMART goal. And as I said, in your strategic plan, you also need to um, address that uh, resource inequity that may be also part of that problem. And as Renee already mentioned, really the root cause analysis is so that you're not trying to have goals uh, with items that you have no control over. So if you can pick a root cause that is within your control, then you then you can build an action plan, a strategic plan that can address that specific goal. And it's not something that's outside of your realm of influence or even control. So we did put an example in here just to kind of walk you through the process of doing um, a root cause analysis. So what is the perceived problem? Students are not meeting grade level growth and achievement in ELA. Why is that? Students are not reading at or above grade level. Why is that? Students do not comprehend grade level text independently. Why is that? Students reading influency scores, WPM, are significantly below grade level norms. Why is that? Students can't decode grade level words when reading independently. Why is that? What is the root cause of the perceived problem? K3 tier one instruction does not focus enough on phonics and phonemic awareness. So that might be something that you can address at your school level because it is tier one instruction, which is the entire school. So what could be the focus goals and action steps? All K3 teachers will attend professional learning focusing on decoding phonics and phonemic awareness instruction. The K3 uh, teacher teams and administrators will look at the reading curriculum and all K3 teachers will add more decoding lessons to their tier one instruction. So these are the goals you can work on. Then you build your SMART goals upon those, those, uh, those focus of go the, fo the goals focus. And then you build your action steps on those, those um, SMART goals. And so it all leads back to something that is within the control of the school and the leadership team can work on. So something's actually actionable um, and not something outside of a school's control. And one thing too I, I would mention is um, a lot of a lot of goals that we see in the strategic plan is <clears throat> addressing well you know we're going to increase those uh, growth and achievement levels on the state assessment, but really that's a really hard action you know hard thing to to drive with actions. Whereas the decoding, increasing the decoding at the tier one level. Um, you know, increasing and, and bettering the teaching practices of that tier one instruction, the, not only can you create the goals and you can create the action steps, but when those things are happening, then the um, secondary outcome is that those growth and achievement levels in the ELA state assessment scores are going to go up. 
Um, so it's, again, like Monique said, they're, they're actionable things that you can actually do. And you can see those improvements through progress monitoring versus waiting for that end of year state assessment. Um, the last slide that we have for you is just sharing some, some professional learning opportunities and resources with you. Not only do you have all the resources that are embedded in each uh, or several of the slides, uh, but we also wanted to give you um, some contact information for uh, some things that are available to you, such as um, Andrea Logan, who is, heads up our uh, the multi-tier systems of support, the MTSS, because we do know that that tier one instruction, as Monique was just talking about, is very important and, and a crucial part of a school's continuous school improvement journey. There's also a newer initiative that's uh, starting up that you may have heard about. I uh, did do an e-blast to you guys, I don't know, maybe a week or two ago um, for Kathy Bertini and Jamie Beal heading up the concept, which is Conceptual Classrooms and Educational Programs for Teachers Pilot. It's a new program. There's, um, as far as I know, still opportunities available. There's an application if you um, email them. And there's also embedded, if, when you get the PowerPoint presentation sent to you, there are links embedded right to the MTSS website, the concept website, where you can um, get the application for that pilot. Uh, next is the Transformational Leaders Network, TLN, and Fran Farr's information, as well as, like I said, that uh, link to that website for more information. We also linked in the main DOE event calendar, where there are lots of opportunities for professional learning uh, through many of the teams throughout the main DOE. And then we linked in some resources that you may use to help with your strategic planning and uh, selecting evidence-based resources and uh, helping you determine those action steps you want to take. And that is the CC Network Resource Library, What Works Clearinghouse, there's also a great resource uh, using evidence to strengthen education investments and then the Academic Development Institute ADI. And as I said, those are all live links. And when you get this presentation, you'll be able to access all of them. All right. And at that at this time, that concludes the information that we wanted to share with you. Now we're going to open up the remainder of our time to questions and thoughts from the participants. So I'm going to take us off the share so that we